Okay, Torbjörn, uh, it's been another minute. Uh, we have yeah. a lot of people attending, so let's get started. Super, thank you very much for, for your assistance, Perule. Uh, welcome to this presentation. Uh, my name is Torbjörn Horberg, and I'm going to tell you about the disruption that is happening towards the software industry. It's a disruption that is affecting uh, Autodesk. It's a disruption that is affecting Symmetry. And I think it is a disruption that is um, affecting yourself as well. So that's why it's really good if you are here as well. So I'm going to tell you about the nature of this uh, disruption. I'm going to tell you how it gives you an opportunity in some way to use this disruption for your own good. I'm going to introduce you to uh, free players that are involved, free uh, gamers that you can use in your disruption. I'm going to tell you how to mind the gap, how to be careful on the way towards wherever you would like to go. And at the end, I will tell you how to get started with, with the whole thing. And like you saw on the first slide, if you have any questions, please use the chat or look me up at um, the architecture booth afterwards. So the disruption. Uh, programming has never been easier. So instead of coding in binary and hexadecimals, and strange lisp with several parentheses that you forget. We, we can now program in visual programming. This is my programming for running my, my webinar. Uh, it enables us to make macro scripts and applications themselves inside Revit without being programmers. Um, however, it's not really there. You can do it with Dynamo. You can build a gigantic thing with Dynamo, but it will not work all the time. You will reach functionality problems, you will reach stability problems, and you will reach performance problems. And then sometimes it might, might seem that your script is a little messy. I'm not quite sure what they mean by that, because my scripts are never messy. But anyway. Um, but it, there are other players out there that you can pick from. So you don't need to use Dynamo. There are other ones that you can use. I would like to talk about an open source one today that I recommend that you take a look at if you're interested in this. So in this quick presentation, I only have 17 minutes left. I will try to give you some alternatives, some combinations, and tell you how to play the game of uh, disruption. So what is your opportunity? Well, your opportunity is not to send a robot to Mars, I'm sorry. But your opportunity is to create a whole range of different applications to solve your workflows, to solve your challenges, to solve your problems in your everyday Revit projects. And um, already now I should give you a, a fair bit of warning. You should know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, this little robot ended up alone and very, very cold on Mars. So try not to end up in the same way as that little robot did. Know what you're getting yourself into and know what, what you can use this for. And that's what I will try to tell you today as well. So what are these players? Which are the alternatives that you should consider looking at if you want to make your own applications for Revit to solve your workflows? Well, it used to be only C Sharp. And C Sharp is it's a pretty decent language. We made, oops, we made all of Naviate in C Sharp. Uh, I make my applications in C Sharp. I've been doing it for like 10 years or so. And most of the apps on the Autodesk App Store are probably made in C-sharp. And there are rumors that Revit is even made in C-sharp. Um, but there is a few other alternatives now. And the, the three that I would like to, to tell you about today in my 16 minutes are Dynamo, Python, and C-sharp. Uh, because C-sharp is still there. And the alternatives are changing all the time. So what used to be only Dynamo for using simple programming in Revit is now becoming perhaps using Rhino Inside and Grasshopper instead. Maybe you have somebody who's really good in using Grasshopper, and that's, also, that's fair. That's a good way of doing it. And there are a lot of stuff happening around Dynamo. You can do Python in Dynamo. You can do C Sharp even in Dynamo. And then Python itself is a very difficult thing to understand. Things There are so many things around Python uh, different languages, different operating systems. People use Mac, Mac and Apple to, to work there on Python or Linux even. So it's difficult to get a picture of what is Python. 
Uh, and C sharp itself, well, C sharp can be a lot of other things. You can do Visual Basic, you can do Ruby, but these three things, you, you can categorize them in three groups. You, you can start by doing visual programming with Dynamo, Grasshopper, or if you're lucky, I don't know, Google Scratch. Uh, you can use scripted programming languages. Python is a scripted programming language, kind of like Lisp in AutoCAD. It's a text file. You just write it in Notepad, and that's it. Or you can use a compiled language where you actually compile the programs you're working on into something that's closer to the hardware that you're working on and perhaps a better suitable for it. So it's three different groups of, of alternative software to use when you want to make your own applications. And um, how what does Dynamo look like? If you have never seen Dynamo before, this is a Dynamo script. This is a very, very simple Dynamo script. But it solves an issue that I had at a customer just last week. How do you get the area from a field region into another parameter? Well, you can't even in Revit 22. But with a simple Dynamo script, you can fix that. You can solve it. You can put this together in a few minutes. And the next week, you might even understand how you did it. If you compare this to C Sharp and Python, they kind of look the same. It's not a big difference. Python on the left and C Sharp on the right. It's I, I actually copy pasted them into each other and combine it with this little curly parentheses and semicolons and all those fancy things you need to need to sprinkle up your your code with to make it work in the other ones. The difference is not really good that big. The the main difference is between Dynamo and these ones is that you need to know how to program. You need to be a programmer. It's good programmer, better programmer, a beginner programmer. You need to be a programmer. You need to understand code a little bit. And that's a bit scary. That's a bit disrupting. But I would like to see Python as the difference between my bicycle and uh, my neighbor's house wagon truck thing. Because sometimes you want to make a script and you just want to make the script. You just want to write something down in Notepad. You just want to get a button into a rabbit. And that's it. You want to hit to your bike and you want to ride up the hills. That's it. And sometimes you want to go on vacation with your family. So you borrow your neighbor's house wagon truck thing. You drive out from the driveway, you fill it up with your flat screen TV and your dog and your, your pool or whatever you need. And then you hit the autobahn. And it's a very comfortable ride compared to the bicycle. So sometimes you need one of them. And sometimes you would like to look at the other one. And it's kind of up to you. Python, well, I like bicycles, so it's kind of hard not to say that I like Python. But there are several advantages and disadvantages between choosing which method do you want to use. So Dynamo on the first is really great for one-off things. Just doing a script, getting it running, and that's it, copying the areas. You have it running, you've done it, it takes two minutes, that's it, fixed. It's really fun because you have quick feedback. You can play around with your little buttons and your cables and you see what happens and what doesn't happen, I suppose. Uh, and there are these geometry functions around it. Uh, if you go for Python instead, Python is faster than Dynamo. Uh, I made some calculations that it's sometimes it's 40 times faster than doing it in Dynamo. Um, it's open source if you like to do that. It's just a text file. So you can actually copy paste the text into an email and send it to somebody, it's that easy. Uh, you can make loops, you can make error checking, and you have access to the entire API in Revit, which is a really important thing. You can program anything. The things that you can't do in Dynamo, you can probably do in Python. And then we have C Sharp. C Sharp is even faster than Dynamo. So if it was 40 times faster than, then it's faster than Python even. It's protected, kind of, in a way. Um, so you can actually package it together into a file, a DLL, most likely. Uh, nobody can open it and play around with it. You know what's inside that, that program that you have compiled. Autodesk have enormous amounts of sample code you just download for free. Uh, everything on the help pages for the software development kit is in C Sharp. So you have a lot of support in C Sharp. And then it is the proper way of programming. That's the proper way of programming. A real programmer will be comfortable in C Sharp. Um, but that brings a few disadvantages as well. So the disadvantage of Dynamo is that it is still buggy. 
it was buggy in Revit 2015, and it's still pretty buggy. Um, it's it's kind of if if you want to look at the house wagon truck thing and the bicycle again, Dynamo is kind of like my old Volvo car from '67. Uh, it runs, but sometimes it doesn't run the next day. Sometimes you need to spend a little quality time with the Volvo, hopefully not in the snow, to get it running again. And that's a bit like that with Dynamo. You might open Dynamo, it doesn't work. And you have to play around with it, quality time, fix it, and then it's working again. Be, be ready for that. Python is a step up. It's kind of difficult to debug. You are working in Notepad, or, or even Notepad Plus, if you have a better Notepad. Uh, just press Tab and your Python script will not work anymore. It's that easy. There is no sample code from Autodesk. You have to rely on forums and other guys who have put something together and you have no idea how it's working, but it kind of works. Uh, you don't get a fair warning if, if something changes in Revit. You, in C Sharp, you will actually get a, a message saying, don't, use, don't do this because in the next version it will not work. But in Python, you don't. And then one thing on Python you should be aware of, it relies on open source people. So for PyRevit, which I'm getting in myself into soon here, there is just one person, basically. Um, and there's a single people doing it on their spare time. It might be around forever, it might not. You know, you're not really sure. A disadvantage of C Sharp, it's a programmer's tool. You can only be a comfortable programmer to use C Sharp with Revit. It's really heavily connected with the Revit version. You can do a, a C Sharp program that works in several Revit versions, but you have to be pretty good in doing it. And the biggest disadvantage in C Sharp, if you need to change something in your code, you need to recompile and re-add and probably restart Revit. On Dynamo, if you need to re fix something in your code, you fix it. That's it. In Python, you change it in your, lit in your notepad and you run it and it's fixed. So C Sharp requires a bit of bigger package to get over there. That for most people, the most important thing is the user interface of these functions, these methods. And that's a big difference. So if you use Dynamo, uh, this is the user interface of Dynamo. Try to find the cable that is not connected. It will be a, a Sudoku challenge, basically. Half of it is yellow. I'm not really sure why it doesn't work. It could be a bit messy. So a great thing is Dynamo Player. It's built in. You just do a normal Dynamo script, and you have Dynamo Player, and you will have the inputs. In this case, you can select the thing in Revit. You can just change a slider to one or zero, and it's, it's a decent user interface. I recommend that you look at the Data Shapes package. It's a specialized package for Dynamo. You can just put these nodes together, and you actually get that window on the right side, where you get the layers from the DVG that you just pressed on, and you can select it instead of all the cables and all those things. And it work, actually works with Dynamo Player as well. The user interface of Python, well, if you want to, you could actually run it in the Revit Macro Manager. Um, it's actually built into Revit. It's C Sharp, Python, Ruby, Visual Basic. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because most people have forgotten that that thing even exists. So I recommend that you run it in the Python shell. This is Python shell version 1.000. That's the only version, as far as I know. But just load in your text file, press the play button, and you're running your program. And you can even use the top part. Then you have like a command window like AutoCAD. And you can actually write your Python things, and it's happening directly in, in Revit, which is scary, of course. And then you can make icons with PyRevit. And I'm getting myself soon onto that part. It's a bit tricky to make windows. If you want to make windows and buttons and drop downs, well, you need your neighbor's house wagon truck thing. Because here it's very comfortable to make everything. You drag and drop things when you work with C sharp. You double click it and write the code that this button is doing. It's like leaning back in your house wagon truck thing and driving an autobahn in 200 kilometers per hour. But it, it had a few other disadvantages, I think. So how do I recommend that you do this? How do I recommend that you, 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 you start doing this? Well, well, of course, don't start with C sharp. But I recommend that you think of games. Games have levels. So level one, the simplest level, 
you hardly know anything. You're just getting started. You don't even know if you like it or not, probably. Then, then it's Dynamo. You make a simple Dynamo script. It does something small. And you're happy with that. And maybe it will stay on level one. Then level two is you combine it a bit with Python. Uh, make it faster. Make it do more than you expected or you couldn't do in, in Dynamo. Level three is Python and PyRevit, which I will show you in a second. Uh, and level four is C Sharp. And maybe you don't go to level four. Maybe you have to leave the game in the middle. Who knows? But try to think of it as levels. You don't need to go to level four all the time. You can do things at level one, and that's fair. And starting level one, just make a Dynamo script. And then you combine the Dynamo script with a nice little black box of Python. And if you're not very good in Python, it's just a few lines of code. When you get better in Python, it gets bigger. And eventually, maybe it will all be a big box of Python inside your Dynamo code, doing all kinds of weird things, in this case, creating a library. Um, and then sooner or later, you might not even have any Dynamo parts left at all. And then you're happy because you reach level three. So PyRevit is a, is a really nice solution for Revit. It, it, it's a collection of, of tools. And you know? some of them are really nice, actually. Small, small tools, just clicking and doing and copying things and one click kind of things. To make a button, a ribbon, a menu in Revit, it's just a question of making a subcategory, a subfolder on your drive, dropping an icon and dropping a text file from Notepad, and then reloading it inside Revit without restarting. And then you have your first tab directly. Press it, run your Python script. Change it in Notepad, save, press the button again. It's really, really simple. But these things are really simple. And I recommend that you, you, you think a little bit of that robot up there on, on Mars. So calculate what you're going to do. Calculate what return of investment do you have on getting yourself into that gigantic black window. Uh, plan ahead what are you actually going to do with this script in the future? How long will this function work? Consider the risks of doing this. If you hire somebody to make a C-sharp function with all buttons and menus, what happens when somebody else hires that person? And then I recommend that you look for an exit. That little robot had no exit. It stayed on the Mars forever, most likely. Um, but look for an exit. If you realize that this doesn't really work, then look for an exit. And I'm, I wouldn't say any names, but I hope you can, you can figure out that symmetry will help you to find that exit, of course. So how do you get started with 15 seconds left? Dynamo, we have a course. It used to be two, one day. Now it is two days on at symmetry. LinkedIn Learning has a lot of stuff. Dynamo BIM, the homepage, has a lot of stuff. If you want to try Python, download the Python shell, download PyRevit if you want to, and uh, the, the development kit. Look at that BIM girl. Don't look too much because you will fall in love with her. But she has a great introduction to Python and Python shell. PyRevit has a four-hour course online. Really, really decent one. Uh, and if you want to get started in C Sharp, well, good luck. But there is actually help on Autodesk. You download the packages, you get your scripts, and uh, there is a really nice blog where you can read all kinds of how to code in C Sharp. But it's a step to get to level four, and it will take a while. So take advantage of your opportunity. You have the chance to make your own small scripts, fixing small things, doing small stuff, but play ahead. and. Remember, that little robot they sent up to Mars, they said it would only work for three months. They built it, they launched it, it will only work for three months. And it turned out that that little one rolled around for 15 years on the surface of Mars. Um, so I suspect that they had a bit of planning to make it work for 15 years longer than, than expected, uh, and a bit of support perhaps to, to do it. But you can actually do it if you really want to. Be careful, and uh, that's all I had for you today. So good luck. Now you have four minutes left to run into something else. Um, I wouldn't rec say that I should recommend anything, but I hope you had something from this. If you have questions, I will look through the chat now. Otherwise, look me up in the exhibition, the Navit Architecture Exhibition, of course. So thank you very much, and uh, have a super nice day.
Thank you, Torbjörn. Um, and as Torbjörn said, uh, we uh, we have now four minutes uh, to leave this room and enter the next one. Uh, you will find Torbjörn uh, on um, this event platform, uh, both in the expo booth and uh, also if you just uh, search him, look him up and uh, schedule a meeting with him. Thank you, Torbjörn. Thank you, everyone. And see you in the next session. Yep. And there comes the cat, because I promised there would be a cat here. <laughs> so there's a cat. So thank you very much.